Hi guys, welcome to another episode of Ultimate Bucket List. And on today's show, I'm here at the Tower of London, one of the country's most famous attractions and home to some of the most valuable pieces of jewellery in the world. Standing on the banks of the River Thames, right next to famous Tower Bridge, you'll find the Tower of London. The tradition, the pageantry, the superstition, and it's also home to the Crown Jewels. This is the most visited attraction here in the City of London, and it's a fantastic family day out. But what's the castle actually like to go around? Well, from the outside, it looks just as fairy tale as it does in the pictures and videos. Now, due to new restrictions, you'll need to book way in advance. Once you've had your tickets checked and had a quick bag search, you enter the castle via Bywood's Tower. And yes, this is one of the main ways that you would access the tower back in the day. What an entrance, huh? Whilst you're here, take a look around you because this place is as imposing as it looks on the pictures. Whilst you're walking around the tower, you might find people dressed like this. These are yeoman warders, also known as beef eaters. Their traditional role here at the Tower of London is to look after the prisoners and to guard the crown jewels. Nowadays, they're more seen as ceremonial tour guides and helpers rather than people who actually guard anything. They're a friendly bunch of people and you can ask them various questions and take pictures of them, but don't annoy them. These are members of the armed forces and have served 22 years in the military, including this lady here, Moira Cameron, the first ever female yeoman warder. It is pretty stunning to walk around. If you're a history buff or you like old things, you'll be absolutely amazed at the detail of this place. And to think, this has been around since the 11th century. You can view lots of things, such as St. Thomas's Tower and the Traitor's Gate, where prisoners would usually arrive by water to be executed, etc. And there's plenty of interesting things to see, such as how guards would originally guard the Tower of London, and the walls themselves you can actually walk along. But each individual tower has a very educational aspect to it, so as soon as you walk into one, it will actually show you what life was like back in the day, and some of them have some amazing views over the city of London. They even have recreated various things such as the King's Chamber, the King's Chapel, and also the King's Throne. It's not hard to imagine what life was like back in the medieval era. As with all ancient castles, the stairwells can be a little bit thin, so if you're at all claustrophobic, these are a bad idea to climb. But if you don't climb them, you'll actually miss a lot of stuff. The walls are pretty cool to walk around, and like I said, you get some amazing views of London itself. And each different tower has a different aspect to it such as the Lanthorn Tower, which houses some interesting relics. There's the Salt Tower, which for some reason wasn't open today. And the Bloody Tower. No, that's actually not a swear word, they actually call it the Bloody Tower. This is where prisoners would usually be kept and or tortured and or executed. So yeah, fun, fun place to be. Now you might have heard that the most famous residents here at the Tower of London are the Ravens. Ravens are incredibly clever birds, and there's a superstition that states that if the ravens were to ever leave the Tower of London, the tower would come crumbling down. As a result of that, at least six ravens are kept locked up here at the Tower of London, you know, just in case. There's a specific yeoman warder called the Raven Master, whose job it is to feed and look after these ravens. It's time to go into this massive thing in the middle. This giant tower is known as the White Tower, and traditionally, this is where the king would actually live and is the innermost part of the Tower of London. Nowadays, it's home to the armory, so as soon as you go in, you'll notice that there's lots and lots and lots of armor and weapons. Some of these belong to very famous monarchs, such as King Henry VIII's armor, and they have several of these, especially this one. I mean, Jesus, look at the size of the codpiece on that. How big was this guy's penis? Wow. 
It's cool to see various bits of armor, but it's also nice to see various weaponry that famous royals and famous knights would have used back in the day. The White Tower also houses the chapel, and this is where monarchs would go traditionally to pray and take mass. Admittedly, you don't get to see much more of the White Tower apart from that, so it's basically time to move on to the reason why you came here in the first place. The Crown Jewels, which is in this building, the Waterloo section of the castle. Guarding the Waterloo building are these guys, the Queen's Guard. Contrary to popular belief, they are allowed to move, and if you do do something, they will retaliate. It's their job to guard the castle after all, and a lot of tourists bother these guards. I highly recommend that you don't do that because A, they could retaliate, and B, you don't want to cost these guys their wages. Huge props to these particular soldiers who were marching around in 35 degree heat, and in those costumes, it's pretty damn difficult. But anyway, walk into the Waterloo Chamber and you'll be immediately met by some of the most exquisite jewellery you'll ever come across in your life. There's a conveyor belt that will take you through some of the most expensive and famous pieces of jewellery in the country, such as the orb and the scepter, and various crowns of monarchs past. Now technically, you're not allowed to film or photograph any of this, but as you can imagine guys, I'm a sneaky bastard, I managed to do it anyway. Some of these crowns, orbs and scepters are some of the most famous pieces of jewellery the world has seen. Right at the end of this conveyor belt is the Queen Mother's crown, but the most famous piece of all is kept in a cabinet all by itself. It's none other than Queen Elizabeth II's Imperial State Crown. This is the most important piece of jewellery in the country and the one the Queen wears on her actual head. But after that, it's time to vamoose, and admittedly, not much else is open after you see the crown jewels. Now's a good time to explore the outside of the castle and speak to some of the friendly yeoman warders, and take one last look at the Queen's guard who are sweating profusely trying to guard the place, before exiting at the side of the castle, and that concludes your visit to the Tower of London. Once you exit the tower, you're met with the majestic view of famous Tower Bridge, possibly the best angle of Tower Bridge that you're going to get. Before you leave for good, however, I highly recommend that you check out the tower shop and take a look at the pictures on the outside of the tower, and ooh, it's our favourite lady again, the one from the beginning of the video. Overall guys, I think you'll have an amazing time here at the Tower of London. It's the number one attraction in London for a reason, and I think it's totally worth the money. Okay, Nin, I'm sold. What do I need to do? Well, you need to come here to the Tower of London. It's situated right next to iconic Tower Bridge, and the nearest tube station is literally across the street, Tower Hill. So it's dead easy to find if you're here in London. The cost to do the tour? Well, it cost me 25 pounds. It's a bit less for kids, and it allows you access to pretty much everything that you've seen in this video. There is no extra to pay. Is there anything else I need to know? Yes, there's various parts of the Tower of London that you can't film or photograph. I know, I know, you saw footage of me doing it. I'm sneaky, what can I say? But if they do catch you, they either tell you to stop recording or they politely ask you to leave. Don't be a fool and try and scare the guards or anything like that, they're just trying to do a job. The beef eaters are very approachable, so be sure to walk up to them and ask them questions because that's basically what they're there to do. And finally, I highly recommend that you book in advance. Because of COVID, they only let in a certain number of people at a time, so if I were you, I'd go to their website and book way, way, way in advance and turn up roughly at that time. If you follow all these steps, I'm pretty sure that you'll have an amazing time here at the Tower of London. And if you have enjoyed this episode, please be sure to like, share and subscribe. Comment on the comment section below. And if you've got any other bucket list ideas that you want me to do, tweet them at me. If you get enough suggestions, I'll go ahead and do that. So guys, thank you very much for watching and we'll see you in the next episode.
the king's lodgings and then we've got all the back ends and the ticket.